So I work in a mental health system um, in between Manchester and Liverpool, and it's a generic mental health system, and we inherently get it wrong. Um, we give diagnosis, we probably give the wrong diagnosis or label for the person. We also then don't define interventions that are ineffectual, ineffective. In a sense, we're always trying to build the dam and not necessarily address the core problem for the person. And again, this goes back to what's been said. The reason for less is more, that when someone's in distress and they can't tolerate the certainty of what's going on inside them, what do we do? We either say, you need to see our home treatment team, or you need, might need a bit more medication, or you might need a little bit, you know, um, an admission, for example. But actually, is that what they need? Are we giving them, for their uncertainty, giving them certainty because we can't tolerate with the certainty? And actually, yeah. you know, we're not addressing or working towards the core issue for them. But in reality, though, the psychiatric system is massively, I hope you don't mind me saying this, it's massively stretched, but necessarily not working as effectively or as efficiently as we could be. If you look at our team members, you know, most of our psychiatric nurses have 40 people on their caseload. I find that I don't think they're very, that gives them enough time to work effectively with those 40. They tend to only see people in crisis. If you're not in crisis, they won't see you. You know, and you know, I don't make that, I don't think they're bad. Uh, you know, they're not bad people. The system is making them provide ineffectual bad care. So our question is, what do we do? How do we improve that? Why do we do that? What we have come in is, what we need the services to realise, actually, what is helpful. And, you know, what we know is helpful is, the, you know, the relationship, the attachment. It's you, the person, who is the active ingredient. So we need to get our services aware. It's not the tablet, it's not the hospital, it's not the system, it's not the therapy, it's you. And the question is, how do we help them realize that it's them that is make them more effective? So it's what we're trying to do. Just got my stopwatch on, being mindful, let me check. I've got three minutes, 20 seconds left. <laughs> Now, it's not rocket science, this, is it? We know that for someone to get a secure attachment to someone, they need to be reliable. You need to know they're there. That's how, you know, you know, you need to be consistent. You need to have a sense of consistency and reliability about it. And you also need to have, in a sense, a coherency, a common language, a common agreed approach that you're working with. And you also need to be able to effectively mirror the person's internal states. You know, that's what happens in childhood. To be a, a more effective parent, you want to be reliable, consistent, have a sort of a routine that the child is used to, and be able to sort of mirror their internal states and reflect back to help them understand, and that's where the curiosity and not knowing, not telling them what they're feeling, you want to be able to mirror back and help them understand how they're feeling. And also you need to be flexible. And in a sense, we can get drawn into well, this person needs DBT, MBT. If you don't know their types of therapy or CAT or, you know, we all say the brands that they need this brands. Actually, I think we're getting drawn into it because when you look at the evidence base, there's no difference between any of them, really. Um, there's a conference in Rome, a personality disorder conference in Rome. I don't know anyone go to it. And there was a mentalization based camp and a DBT camp. And they wouldn't speak to each other because they're different types of therapy. But there's no difference between them. There's a commonality. All this graph shows is essentially, when you do the trials, if you've got a good, well-organized, consistent care where the attachment is the theme and the person appropriately models the person's feelings, people tend to respond positively. But how do we help a system develop that? <coughs> what we have been able to do is be able to train our non -mental, <coughs> generalist mental health practitioners to deliver psychologically informed interventions for people who meet the diagnosis of a personality disorder. It doesn't have to be a personality disorder, we just use that. The thing I like about you know, the diagnosed personality disorder, they already know in the NICE guideline 
that the medication doesn't work. So it's already, we've already got, you know, sort of an open door. We still prescribe far too much medication for the person. But what we've been able to do, and this is re really important for our team, is to have our certain practitioners trained to work with people who need a diagnosis of personality disorder. And I'm, I'm sort of coming to the end now. In a sense, now it seems quite a clinical approach, but what we've done is there's a pathway. So if you're somebody who meets the diagnosis of a personality disorder in our service, we'll talk to you about that, because the evidence suggests that on the whole, people benefit from hearing it versus not hearing but you don't stop here you then dismantle it you know you say actually it's based on science and how you all these symptoms if we work on what's causing the symptoms we're likely to help you and you, then you won't have this diagnosis anymore but what we have in our service now is someone who goes on a pathway yeah so they know how long they're seeing somebody and when they're seeing and what phase they're in we find that's potentially really what screen practitioners really like and uh uh, service users really sort of value it because they know where they are and where they stand. What's really interesting because you've got our CMHT practitioners, practitioners now. You know, if somebody doesn't turn up, I don't know if you used to hold. Do anyone hear this CPN knock? Has anyone heard of that before? When then they're not in. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But actually, what the practice? If someone isn't there, they phone them up and say, "Look, where are you?" You know. So it's all about the attachment to the key. The attachment is the key. And our practitioners really like this way of working. They get supervision, they value supervision. And, the, and we just audited that. But also that the service users are reporting they really benefit from having this consistent, reliable care. Now the crux of this is what I'm saying is it doesn't need to be specialist services to work effectively with people who meet the diagnosis of personality. If you've got a clear rationale and the staff are trained in a framework and the, the training they get for this essentially is about how do you mirror someone's feelings you know how do you look after yourself but then make sure you look after them how do you listen effectively you know it's not rocket science but sometimes staff need this training let's check my time and that's generally it i'm just gonna um, that's the book. We were fortunate enough to work with Anthony Bateman on implementing the structured clinical management training, which is one of the trainings we do. And just a little plug for our service, we're, we're the centre, we just named ourselves the Centre of Expertise in Personality Disorder. And in a sense, we're a collection of experts by occupation. So I've got expertise of trying to help people who meet the diagnosis of personality disorder. But we also have an equal number of experts by experience, because it can only be together that you can help, and that's why this Centre of Expertise for Personality, because it's co-PD, so it's working together, essentially. And what we do is develop lots of training, but everything is developed in partnership, because I don't understand their mind, and so, you know, and sometimes they don't know or is aware of how they come across on the outside. But anyway, that's me done, short and sharp. But anyway, I think the slides are going to be available for everybody, aren't they? Okay, thank you. Thank you.